नमस्ते प्रणाम गीता ध्यान ओम पार्थाय प्रतिबोधिता भगवता नारायणेन स्वयं व्यासेन ग्रथिता पुराण मुनिना मध्ये महाभारत अद्वैतामृतवर्षिणी भगवती अष्टादशाध्यायि अंबत्वासंदा भगवदगीते भवत्षिणी ओ भगवदगीता विथ विच लॉर्ड नारायण हिमसेल्फ गेव एनलाइटनमेंट टू अर्जुना Ancient sage Vyasa included it in the Mahabharata. O goddess, content in the 18 chapters and showering the nectar-like knowledge of non-dualism. O my affectionate mother, the destroyer of rebirth, I meditate upon thee. And now, Krishna Vandana. वसुदेवसुत कंसचाणूरमर्दनम देवकी परमानंदम कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गुर सन् ऑफ वसुदेव द स्लेयर ऑफ कंस एंड चाणू एक्स्ट्रीम डिलाइट फॉर मदर देवकी ओ कृष्ण सुप्रीम टीचर ऑफ द यूनिवर्स माय सैल्यूटेशन स्टी So today we will be reading the 18th shloka of the Karma Yoga, third chapter of Shrimad Bhagavad Gita. Uh, in our previous reading, uh, in the 17th shloka that we read yesterday, that uh, Shri Krishna has told about uh, that person, the person who rejoices in the self, satisfies, gets all the satisfaction in the self, and is intended being merged in the self for that person he has attained the ultimate there is no need for doing any obligatory duty for that person there is no need for doing any swadharma also that person is free from all the actions but that stage comes that is the last stage on the path and till we reach the last stage on the path we have to continue doing work but as far as that person about whom shri krishna told us in the previous shlok in the previous verse that how 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 this, this such a person who remains established in oneself who is a Sthita Pratnya, who is who is a Sthita Dhihi? How does he, uh, you know, does he seek anything from the society as such? From does he seek anything from the outside world, or is it that he is just enjoying the bliss within being himself? Sri Krishna says, "Nay, vatasya krute naartho." नाकृते नेह कश्चन न चास्य सर्वभूतेशु कश्चिदर्थव्यपाश्रय न एव तस्य नॉट इवन ऑफ हिम नॉट इवन ऑफ हिम कृते न बाय एक्शन अर्थ कंसर्न न कृते न न अकृते न नाइदर from not doing any action eha kshan here any either by doing action or by not doing action what happens of such a person nacha asya of this man sarvabhuteshu nacha asya is doesn't remain sarvabhuteshu in all beings Chit, any even 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 a small fraction doesn't is even a small fraction doesn't remain of what artha vyapashraya depend he is not dependent even in in in, in just uh, uh, even in a fraction he is not dependent on any object of this world he is not dependent on anything 
for him there in this world there is no object to acquire by performing any action na ai eva asya krutena artho by performing any action there is not that he is going to get any object out of it na akrutene hat kashchan nor by not performing any action he is going to lose anything he is not going to gain anything he is not going to gain anything by not performing any action nor he is going to gain anything by performing any action nor is he to depend on anybody for anything nacha asya sarva bhuteshu he doesn't have to depend on anyone चित अर्थ व्यपाश्रय अर्थ व्यपाश्रय इज डिपेंडिंग फॉर एनी ऑब्जेक्ट ही डजेंट हैव टू डिपेंड ऑन एनी बडी इन दिस यूनिवर्स ही इज सेल्फ फुलफिलर द लॉर्ड कम्स एंड फुलफिल्स ऑल हिज नीड्स ही डजेंट हैव टू डिपेंड ऑन मियर लिविंग बीइंग्स फॉर any of his requirements to sustain his body to sustain himself there is not that by performing any action he is he is going to gain anything nor by not performing any action he is going to lose anything so that is what shri krishna talks about such a person who is always merged in the self who is merged in the self who is satisfied in the self who is contented santushta by remaining in the self by meditating on the self by merging in the self such person now <clears throat> in sound sleep man is self sufficient when we are in deep sleep do we need anything when that there is not even a dream state it is such a sound sleep that we are not dependent on anybody in this world it is only we and our atman it is the only thing that is awake that is conscious at that point of time in the deep sleep we don't need anybody we are enjoying that moment with our real self he has nothing to seek from any entity what what happens when when we get that sound sleep when we are enjoy the deep sleep we get up in the morning and we we, we just uh, uh, our, our, uh, our our first thought oh i had such a beautiful sleep i enjoyed my dreamless sleep yesterday night it was such a, a peaceful sleep as if i was in a bliss in that particular moment we don't need anybody it is just we and our true self now in that kind of state we don't need any external entity to come and help us in getting anything whether it is material object or whether it is a peace of mind we don't need any external uh, inputs for that but it is a negative state based on nisyas but that, that that sound sleep that we actually enjoy that we don't enjoy in our with our consciousness that is all happening in the subconscious we only know that yes i had a wonderful sleep i had a beautiful sleep i am so fresh today morning that's that's the only but what is happening at that time we are not conscious of it so whatever happens it 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 is just a nuisance it is just a happening it is temporary and again we get up and we keep on remembering that state of mind but at the same time after getting up we are again uh, get ourselves busy with all these worldly activities it is not that we keep on enjoying the deep sleep no it is just a temporary phase that too it doesn't come every day once in a while 
And once that particular peace, uh, blissful state ends, we are once again back to the same vicious cycle. The spiritually enlightened man, on the other hand, enjoys infinite bliss. Now just imagine, once in a while we enjoy that deep sleep, that sound sleep, such a great the feeling we get next day morning. Now just imagine of a person who enjoys this uh, peace in the spiritual contemplation of being merged with the self which happens temporarily in our deep sleep. Huh? That kind of person, that kind of spiritually enlightened person he enjoys that infinite beautitude all along. For him, it is not coming out of that state and again starting our day, starting our core daily chores. No. That spiritually enlightened person remains in that state forever. Maybe for some time he may bring down his mind to the normal plane. But that's it. That bringing down the mind on the normal plane is a temporary phase for a spiritually enlightened person. Not like people like us. For us, enjoying that bliss is a temporary function in that sound sleep. For a spiritually enlightened person, for the one who has merged himself, his mind in the self, for him, bringing down mind to the worldly plane is a temporary function. Otherwise, rest of the time, that person is just enjoying the supreme bliss, the divine bliss. Not else is there for him to obtain. He has got everything. What else is there for him to gain? He has found his mother. He has found... The servant has found his ultimate master. The child has found its ultimate mother. The devotee has found its ultimate lord. What else? Nothing else. There is no duality, anything else to be achieved. He has merged in the self. This Brahmavasta is never again lost. Once a person enters into this kind of uh, uh, plane, then this, that was condition, that condition is never lost. It is a permanent. Temporarily he may or she may come down from that plane. Temporarily for the sake of others, for the sake of teaching others. But permanently these people they dwell in that plane. The Brahma Jnani therefore has nothing to seek from man or even God. Because a Brahma Jnani who has attained the Nirvana, who has attained the Samadhi, for him there is no differentiation of me and God. And it is. Aham Brahmosmi. So, that is what Sri Krishna tells you. Then that person, having merged in the self, he doesn't need any external inputs to gain anything in this life because he doesn't have to perform any action. By performing, it is not that by performing action he is going to get anything. And also it is not that by not performing action he is going to lose anything. He has got everything that is to get in this universe. He has got the world, the universe with him. What more he needs? He has got all the knowledge. He has got all the wealth. He has got all the riches. He has got all the devotion that is to get in this world. He has got all the love, all the affection. Whichever thing one needs, one craves for in this world, everything is there with this person who has merged in his self. So, on this particular shloka, this beautiful teaching of Sri Ramakrishna that uh, Swami Chirbhavananda Ji has quoted. Sri Ramakrishna says, One of the signs of the enlightened man is that 
he is enjoying boundless bliss within himself. Exactly what Sri Krishna has said. He enjoys boundless bliss within himself. The surface of the ocean seems boisterous, but at the bottom it is all calmness. Now, when you look at the ocean, when there is a storm, you may feel that, oh, but the surface of the ocean is so turbulent, there is so much of wind and there is, it is boisterous surface during the storm. But you go deep down, it is all calm, it is all peace. So such a person, self, I mean the, the enlightened person who has uh, found that boundless bliss by merging his self within, with his self, he is like that ocean. He may temporarily come down from that plane, get involved in some kind of activities and you feel, oh, this fellow is performing all these activities. But that in fact is a temporary phase for him. The phase that is permanent for us, that is a temporary phase for him. For us, that enjoyment of bliss in a deep sleep is a temporary phenomenon. But for that person, the self-enlightened person, the spiritually enlightened person, that is the permanent phase. Coming down, getting involved in these activities is a temporary phase like that boisterous nature of the ocean on the surface. But you go deep down. It is so calm, it is so serene, it is absolutely cool. Even such is the state of affair of the Jnani. That is what Sri Ramakrishna says. The Jnani may perform, you, we may find some Jnanis coming down on the normal plane and uh, you know having a very uh, active life, but that is only for a temporary moment. Inside, they are all are enjoying the ultimate bliss, the ultimate peace. So that is what uh, Sri Krishna has told us in this 18th shlok of the Karma Yoga. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Sri Krishna Arpanamastu Jai Sri Ramakrishna Jai Thakur Jai Mahal Jai Swami.